Okay, the next talk is going to be by Michael de Oliveira, and he's going to be telling us about uh, quantum circuits surpassing bias threshold circuits in constant depth. Thank you. Thank you for our presentation. Um, so I'm Michel. I'm presenting this work about uh, shallow depth quantum circuits. This was joint work Minsui Se, uh, Leander Minch, and Satya Supramanian. Um, and now, starting with our uh, general motivation that we have in quantum, which is showing and identifying computational problems for which quantum uh, computers have advantage over classical computers. And normally, we are most interested in those which are of exponential magnitude. And so in computational complexity terms, we could identify problems that are in BQP and not in BPP and P. And uh, P and BPP are uh, efficient classical computations, so computations that run in polynomial time. Uh, deterministically or probabilistically, and BQP are the ones that we solve efficiently on quantum devices. And here we know, for example, Schoss algorithm uh, that can do that. However, it requires large fault-tolerant quantum devices. And this issue has been addressed by finding problems as the ones that have been discussed in the previous talk, and one of them being boson sampling. And it has shallow depth quantum circuits, and it's also separating these classes. Uh, however, both of them require some assumptions. So we cannot really prove them um, without assuming something, some computational statement that normally are well-founded, but we need them. And now we can uh, motivate the question of removing the reliance on the assumptions, weakening the assumptions, or trying to see which kind of uh, statements we can do unconditionally. So for what can we prove that quantum is better than classically without relying on any assumption? And as in the classical case, this exists for shallow depth circuits. So let me introduce you NC0. NC0 is the class of constant depth classical circuits with classical gates of bounded Fenin. And those are normal gates like AND and OR and NOT. And then we have the quantum equivalent, where we have constant depth quantum circuits uh, with single and two qubit gates. And here we had, some years ago, a breakthrough result by Bravi, Gossett, and Koenig that showed that exists a problem that can be solved by QNC0 circuits, so constant depth quantum circuits, uh, that cannot be solved by NC0 circuits, so the classical equivalent. And it's very interesting because, it, first of all, it's near term, it's shallow depth, and it relies on no assumption, no computational assumption. And furthermore, it was even shown to be noise robust, meaning that we can assume local stochastic noise, and this advantage still survives. With a different problem, but it still is possible to separate these two classes. And now the main critique that we could do here is that NC0 is rather a weak computational class. Um, now in circuit complexity, the next class that we would like to look at uh, very naturally is AC0. So here we have, again, a constant depth classical circuit uh, with AND and OR gates, but the AND and OR gates have unbounded fan So we can feed as many inputs to a gate as we want, but it has to behave as an AND and an OR. And here was a very significant result, too. So uh, Adam Benoit uh, and his collaborators showed that we can solve a problem with QNC0, again, constant of quantum circuits, that AC0 circuits fail to solve, even in the cage, average case hardness setting. Uh, and this recently was also shown to be nice robust. There will be even a talk tomorrow if you're interested to attend this. Um, and now the main critique we could do again is that AC0 is rather of small practical use. We don't know a lot of computational processes that we can solve there. Um, and now the next interesting class that, could, that we could look at is TC0, so constant at uh, threshold circuit, uh, where we have as a minimal element a threshold gate. So this is a gate where we have uh, the activation of, of the gate to one at a certain Hemming weight. And then we have a circuit of unbounded Fenin gates of this type. Uh, and why is this interesting? Because CC0 already can solve some interesting algebraic problems, like integer multiplication and sorting. And it was actually motivated to define and describe um, uh, neural networks as circuits. And some recent results have even been shown that uh, large LLMs and even ChatGPT, this type of models are captured by circuit classes like TC0. Uh, but here we have the main issue is that we don't have strong lower bound techniques uh, to prove that certain problems are not in this class. 
Uh, and since its creation or its definition in the 80s, we only have uh, quadratic lower bounds for that two and that three, and for arbitrary depth of superlinear wiring. Uh, and to insist on the hardness of finding lower bounds for the circuit classes, we had some breakthrough result in 2016 by Ryan Williams that showed that ACC, ACC so classical consultant circuits with AND and arbitrary mod gates, which is not more powerful than TC0, uh, cannot solve problems in exponential time theory machines with NP oracles. So it seems kind of a trivial statement, but even proven this was a breakthrough. And now what we do is that we alternatively explore a class that was recently introduced by Coomer, which we call bounded polynomial threshold function circuit that has a certain parameter k. And what's interesting is that this parameter k allows us to interpolate between AC0, so the class for which we know some lower bounds, and beyond TC0 even. So it's, it has a non-trivial connection. Um, now defining it, um, this circuit uh, class of constant depth is defined by gates of, gates of this type. So if you have a gate of the type R, uh, for any input which has a Hemming weight smaller than K, then we can map it whatever we want. So with any polynomial of degree K. And if the input string has a Hemming weight larger than K, then we have a trivial behavior of R gate, and it has to be a one. So inversely, we have also end gates of this type. And we can see that larger the K, the more computational power we have, because then we increase the region where we can do whatever we want, and we reduce the tail, which is trivial. Uh, and for instance, to see immediately that we get some non-trivial gates inside is that we get threshold gates that we can activate between zero and k. And if k is super logarithmic size, it's already gates that AC0 circuits cannot compute. Um, and now trying to show a little bit how this class relates to previous classes. So when k is one, you get exactly AC0. When k is n, it kind of trivially computes everything because it can simply output any uh, function that we want. But when k is uh, of the order of just super logarithmic, then it's strictly larger circuit class than AC0. And it has a non-trivial overlap with TC0. And now, because this is a new uh, circuit class, it would be nice to also understand how it relates more generally and what it can do. And in the first paper which introduced the circuit class, it was connected to linear threshold uh, uh, function circuits, which generally have been used in computer science to solve a lot of classification problems. And the relation is that with our parameter k, we can relate to which subset of these circuits we can compute, and it has a restriction on the weights. So the larger the value of k, the less restricted the weights are, and the more functions of this uh, type we can implement. And what we did also additionally is that with a single bet one of this uh, circuit class, we can uh, approximate in this non-trivial region of the perimeter K, very general activation functions, for example, the K relu. Um, and now that we have defined our classes, we can actually already ins instantiate our results. And here we find uh, a problem for which we can show that Q and C0 can solve. So constant that quantum circuits can solve and bounded polynomial threshold function circuits with a super logarithmic parameter k, so n to one over 5d, cannot solve. And this is a new and strictly larger circuit class than AC0. Uh, on top of that, we have even generalized this to an um, infinite family of uh, relation problems. Each one of them can be solved by a different q and QNC0 circuit in constant depth, while all of them fail to be solved with this uh, classical circuit class. Uh, now, going a little bit through how we did this. So first, we have to find the suitable problems to find the separation and prove the separation. Uh, and we can only rely on relation and sampling time problems because for decisions, Q and C0 and NC0 are even equivalent. So even the simplest classical circuit class is equivalent. Uh, so the first separation, for those who know a little bit about it, was related to this non-local game, the magic square. And the problem had the magic square problem built into it and it was used to prove the separation. Then the separation with AC0 used a parity halving problem where we are uh, given an even input string and we have to output a string which is modular two congruent with the Hemming weight of the input string divided by two. 
And when the output string is of the same size as the input string, this is actually related to the generalized Mermin game. And what we did here is that we generalized the previous set of problems uh, to arbitrary primes. And we call them the inverted strict relation problems, where we get an input string, which is modular, zero, um, modular p congruent with 0. And the output string has to be modular p congruent with x uh, minus x divided by p. Um, and now we need to show that uh, bounded polynomial threshold function circuits cannot solve these problems. So we start with our circuits. We apply uh, a multi-output, multi-switching lemma to reduce them to decision trees whose leaves are sets of decision trees. And it's a set because each one of the decision trees computes one of the output bits. And then, uh, okay, this is known to be equivalent to NC0 circuits. And for those, we can use all techniques, which is light cone arguments. And with light cone arguments, we can reduce this NC0 circuit to a non-local game over a subset of the inputs we started with. And for this non-local game, because it's this generalized Merman game, for example, for the parity halving problem, we can then use classical correlation bounds that we have for the winning strategies, and we get correlation over bounds for a circuit class. And our main contributions here is to define a multi-output switching lemma for this new circuit class, which allows us to reduce this object, and then uh, defining the new non-local games, as well as the winning strategies, the optimal winning strategies, classically and quantumly. Um, exploring a little bit further the, the switching lemma, uh, for those who don't know it, the idea of the switching lemma is that we fix some variables of the input, and then we look how the circuit was reduced. So we remove the gates that trivially evaluate already to 0, 1. Uh, and then we keep fixing variables, and we see at which rate the circuit simplifies to a trivial circuit. And what the switching lemma does, which is one of our contributions, is to show how we can fix variables such that we, with high probability, obtain this computational object, which is this decision tree with decision trees as leaves. And for this, we introduce a new multi-switching lemma, which is kind of the lemma which allows us to reduce adapt one of the circuit. And then this allows us to, to create a debt reduction lemma, which reduces the entire circuit for constant debt. Um, on top of this, because we consider this family this family of relation problems, they will all be related to a specific family of non-local games. In particular, it's, it's of the type of uh, XOR non-local games. So we define them, and we define the correlation function uh, with which uh, any, any strategy relates to the winning strategy. Uh, and then we are able to show that any classical strategy that you can come up with has exponentially small correlation with the winning probability, uh, with the winning strategy, while there exists a quantum strategy that contains, uh, that maintains a constant positive correlation. So the last thing that is only missing is to create the quantum circuit sets of this. And here we take expiration from the quantum strategy. However, the quantum strategy needs, the optimal one needs GHZ states, and we cannot build them in QNC0. But we can build uh, Poorman's cat states. In this case, we need QDIT Poorman cat states, the generalization to QDITs. We show that there exists a, a quantum circuit that can solve this, can create this uh, states in constant depth. We apply the strategy, the measuring strategy with the inputs of the non local game to this state. And then, because we don't have a GHZ state, but a local equivalent one, we get this inter uh, additional in, um, um, inner products that completely randomize our outcome. But then we show that we can compute uh, at least one of them and attach an additional uh, correction to the outcome of the circuit such that we can solve the relation problems. And so as conclusions, we have shown there exists a problem that QNC0 circuits, so constant depth quantum circuits can solve, and that uh, bounded polynomial threshold function circuits with a large parameter k, so super logarithmic, cannot solve. For this, we created a new multi-output switching lemma. Then we extended this to an infinite family of uh, problems in higher dimensions, in all prime QZ dimensions. And for this, we did some created some generalization of taxon on local games, as well as proved the correlation bounds for classical and quantum strategies. Here we have a table comparing our results to previous ones. So what we have new is this new separation with this new class. We have uh, this new family of problems, which creates new geometries between, uh, with which we can solve the problems. 
uh, we extend to higher dimensions. We get average case hardness also as in the AC0 separation. And in our preprint, we have even extended it to the noise resilient version, but it was not part of this talk. Um, as open problems, uh, obviously we could ask, we can make it noise resilient. And we have done this in the preprint, but we need all to all connectivity in the constant depth quantum circuit. So it's still open if we can do it with geometrically local uh, circuits. We believe it should be possible, but we haven't achieved it yet. Uh, then the obvious question is, can we extend it to a larger circuit class? Uh, obviously, TC0 would be interesting, but the classes of AC0P, so AC0 with a mod gate, seems to be uh, a more tangible uh, class to try. And then the, we have another question is, can we extend it to computational problems which are more useful? So this we almost tailored to generate the separation, but there was an interesting result between Q and C0 and NC0 for a decoding problem. So now we are questioning if we can do some interesting separation for something which will be practically useful. So some classical parallel computation that we can do it more efficiently on constant depth and parallel quantum devices. Um, thank you very much for your attention. If you want to have a look at your preprint, also please have a look at the concurrent work, which also generated our theorem one uh, by Savi and Biniak. Savi is actually here. Uh, and they have also some other quantum separations. So it's also a very interesting read. Thanks for the talk. Questions? Thanks for the nice talk. Um, quick, just a quick question on the definition of noise re resilience. Um, in which sense you said uh, your algorithm or proposal is noise resilient? That's a good question. So considering the local stochastic noise model, you can make it, um, you can create the same QNC0, so the same constant that quantum circuit, encoded in the surface code, and show that you can do uh, run the surface code in constant depth. And then at the end, you don't decode the, um, the quantum circuit, but you can show that producing this output is still hard for the classical circuit class. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. Quick question. Have you thought about the class on the AC0 IQ? Of the mod gate, How with the mod gate. Yeah, have you thought about it? I mean, you put you put it as a question, but have you thought about? We the, have, and I think the the same techniques apply, or no, the techniques don't apply. That's why it's not here, and we don't have techniques for relational sampling problems. So for multi outputs, we have some lower bound techniques for AC zero P for decision problems. Yeah, where the the solution to the problem is zero or one. So yeah, we yeah. Have simply to decide. Um, but for multi outputs, there's no techniques. So your technique, where does your technique break? Uh, switching lemmas don't apply to that circuit class. The mod gates, right. um, what, if you apply the... some random restrictions, so we fix some variables. Mm. It doesn't guarantee that the mod gate will simply evaluate to one or zero. So for example, True. if you want yeah. to evaluate parity, yeah. you need almost to know the entire string uh -huh. to at the end tell if it's even or odd. Mm. So this type of techniques don't apply to AC0P. Okay. Fair enough. Any ideas? <laughs> what to do? Uh, I 
think so. Like the, the, the for the decision version, there's this polynomial method, so you can interpret each gate as a polynomial, and then you can choose a field. And for example, if you have AC02, um, you can show that computing mod three, for example, is a high degree polynomial in F2, and AC02 can only create low degree polynomials. Then this is the way you can prove that mod three cannot be computed in this. Uh, right, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But generalizing this to multi outputs and sampling is not true. It requires completely new ideas to do that. Okay. You can do polynomials for like like multi bit outputs if you just like, I don't know, maybe have a polynomial for each output bit or something, right? Yes, but here because the, the condition is that you saw them at the end. This operation would increase the degree, and so you cannot notice if it's high or low degree. Everything is a high degree at the end. I don't know if I was clear with that, but um, this problem is very specific in hiding the, the difference between the degrees, and you cannot use that technique. Uh, if there are no other questions, I guess we can thank the speaker again. Thank <laughs> you.